Hello there. I'm Otto Othman and this is 7 Edition. Your headlines this evening. Dong Jia Jong insists no Jawi lesson for year four pupils. Government making citizenship applications for undocumented children faster. And dozens dead in massive Mogadishu bomb blast. A 33-year-old graphic artist and her friend had a harrowing experience when two men robbed them at a 24-hour laundromat in Banda Sri Damansara, Petaling Jaya at about midnight last night. A CCTV footage video of the incident also went viral after it was uploaded on social media. In the 12.10 a.m. incident, both women were waiting for their laundry when the culprits, who covered their face with cloths and armed with sticks, entered the coin wash outlet. The suspects then pointed their sticks at the women and grabbed their bags before making their getaway using the victim's yellow Perodua Maive. Apart from the car, other items that were stolen include the victim's mobile phones, keys and 200 ringgit in cash. Fortunately, the victims were unhurt. Police are now on the hunt for the two suspects. The case is being investigated under the penal code for armed robbery. A luxury entertainment outlet along Jalan Perak, Kuala Lumpur was raided by police at about midnight last night. 38 foreign women, mainly from Eastern Europe, were among those nabbed in the 12.15 a.m. operation conducted by the City Police Anti-Vice Gambling and Secret Societies Division. KLCID Chief Dato Rushdi Muhammadisa said the premises had been operating since three months ago and had employed the foreign women, who were believed to be working as guest relations officers (GROs). They comprised of 18 Ukrainians, 11 Russians, three each from Kazakhstan and Belarus, as well as one each from Britain, Germany, and Thailand. It was also believed that the services of the GROs were provided after customers pay for an exclusive membership worth thousands of ringgit, and that the premises was often frequented by people in the business and corporate sector. Police also arrested a local man believed to be the outlet's manager for Bangladeshi men and an Iranian man who were working at the night spot. All those detained were then taken to Danglangi police headquarters for further investigation and documentation. The Home Ministry is taking proactive measures to resolve the problems involving citizenship application, particularly for children without any documents in this country. Its minister, Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin, said the standard operating procedure, SOP, concerning the matter had been improved without the applicant having to wait too long, as was the case previously. According to the minister, the improvement in the SOP concerning the granting of citizenship, particularly under Article 15A of the Federal Constitution, saw the approval process, especially involving adopted children, or the adoption process, speeded up to less than one year. In an interview with Bernama, he added that for application under Article 15A, the new SOP outlined several measures in ensuring that every application for citizenship could be considered in a more meticulous, fair and speedy manner, including a clearer guideline in handling and considering the application, compared to instances where the application had to wait up to 10 years. Among others, the updated SOP, which went through a process of study since April, contained notification mechanism for all applicants regarding the reason for the rejection of citizenship application and the application processing period, which was previously not informed. Thus, beginning next year, citizenship application received for individuals below 21 years would undergo a more efficient process, that is, three months, 14 days at the National Registration Department, JPN, and eight months at the Home Ministry. For the record, between 2013 until 2018, the JPN recorded citizenship applications totaling 111,142, with 26,222 applications being rejected, while 54,222 were still in the process, where 27,835 were applications under Article 15A relating to children without citizenship. 
Immediate remedial measures will be taken against the soil movement detected this week at Taman Club UK in Kuala Lumpur. The affected areas will be closely monitored by technical agencies who will offer solutions to help protect their residents in the surrounding areas. Wanzul Islam reports. I'm here in UK Padana Bukit Antar Bangsa where as you can see in front of me the land has completely collapsed at this residence forcing the homeowners to move out of their houses for fear of their safety. Now the assemblyman here in Bukit Antar Bangsa Datu Sri Azmin Ali has promised the residents that a solution will be resolved by 8th of January next year. Saya percaya pada 8 Januari ini hasil daripada laporan uh, daripada jabatan dan agensi teknikal kita akan mengambil satu keputusan uh, segera untuk mitigate uh, masalah yang berlaku kita sedia maklum ini kawasan yang sensitif um, semenjak beberapa tahun yang lalu dan uh, tanggungjawab MPAJ untuk memastikan kawasan ini selamat uh, untuk diduduki Dato Sri Azmin, who is also the Gomba MP, visited one of the affected houses with unrepairable fractures in the walls, forcing the occupants to vacate immediately. The decision to demolish the affected homes will only be finalised after a detailed report is received by the Department of Minerals and Geoscience, JMG, along with the Ampang Jaya Municipal Council, MPAJ. Laporan daripada JMG merupakan laporan yang paling penting untuk melihat keadaan air yang mengalir di bawah tanah ini di manakah punca yang sebenarnya dan um, sekiranya ada keperluan untuk mitigate masalah ini uh, kerajaan negeri, MPAJ dan kementerian uh, termasuk KPKT akan membincangkan langkah-langkah um, uh, untuk menyegerakan tindakan uh, memulihkan keadaan di kawasan ini. Currently, research by the JMG and the MPAJ only covers six affected homes. However, the surrounding area will also be monitored regularly to ensure that similar incidents are detected early to ensure the safety of the residents. On Wednesday, residents of Jalan UK2 were forced to evacuate their homes after several cracks were found on the retaining wall of their house compound. One is Islam, 7 edition. 17 NGOs led by Chinese educationist group Dong Zhong have urged the Education Minister, Dr. Masli Male, to hold dialogues with them soon to resolve the impasse on the in introduction of Jawi lessons to year four pupils in vernacular schools next year. The call was made during a press conference by the group, which also protested the move by police in obtaining a court order, forcing them to cancel a conference on the Jawi issue, which was supposed to be held earlier today. Kami berasa tidak puas hati atas tindakan pihak polis memohon kepada mahkamah untuk mendapatkan perintah larangan terhadap persidangan pertubuhan pertubuhan Cina pada 28 Disember 2019 yang di yang dirancangkan uh, sebelum ini dengan alasan mengganggu ketenteraman awam dan mendatangkan bahaya kepada nyawa atau keselamatan manusia. The group also claimed that the peaceful conference initially to take place at the New Era College in Kajang at 1 p.m. would discuss their objections towards the introduction of a Jawi module through dialogue and not confrontation. Prior to this, the Education Ministry said the Jawi lessons will stay in vernacular schools but only with the consent of students and the parent-teacher association of each school. However, Dong Jong insisted that the school boards should be ones to decide the matter. The Inspector General of Police, Tan Sri Abdul Hamid Bado, described the racial and religious issues raised by certain quarters lately as burdening the Royal Malaysia Police. He said the security force had been burdened by unexpected petty issues and dampened the police's efforts to give better, fair and transparent service delivery to the people. Daripada saya, ya, sebagai Ketua Polis Negara, tidak ada agenda tersirat ataupun yang sempit ya untuk nak menggagalkan itu tidak saya tidak bermain politik di sini semata-mata saya yakin dengan uh, keputusan ketua polis langau tersebut dan pihak ketua polis daerah uh, ulu langat itu uh, keputusan itu membawa 
membuat permintaan kepada pihak mahkamah semata-mata atas dasar faktor keselamatan. I think uh, saya yakin selepas ni nanti mungkin everybody get back to their senses ya. Masing-masing berfikir dengan lebih waras supaya isu ini tidak diberikan ruang untuk disensasikan mana-mana pihak pun ya. Mana-mana pihak. Pun. Selepas 62 tahun kita merdeka, we are supposed to be very wise dah ya. Uh, bijak untuk nak apa ni tetapi menyedihkan nampak gayanya selagi matang negara ni semakin selagi, semakin kurang matang pula pemikiran setengah uh, pihak tersebut yang menduka citakan and the one thing that I would like to he was commenting on the dissatisfaction of certain quarters regarding the court order prohibiting a conference to protest the teaching of Jawi script in vernacular schools after being served the court order, Chinese education group Dong Jiao Zhong cancelled the conference a day before the event was scheduled to take place. It also requested all invitees to not show up at the venue. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail today stressed the financial literacy is very important as it would act as the first line of defence against unfair market practices. Speaking at the launch of the Putrajaya Literacy in Financial Technology Festival, she said Malaysians need to equip themselves with financial literacy in order to stop them from being victims of online scams. Ni scam scam ni banyak ya sekarang. Ya kita cyber security, cyber scamming ini ada banyak. Love scam ada banyak. Sebab kita banyak yang um, society kita sekarang ni banyak ya. Keseorangan dan rasa sunyi dan ini adalah menjadi mangsa kepada love scam terutamanya makau scam dan semua. Banyak yang buat laporan kepada wanita kerana saya kira orang lelaki pun ada juga jadi mangsa scam tetapi malu nak buat laporan. The Deputy Premier added that consumers should be aware of the risks associated with the use of financial technology. And these include falling into debt as a result of making purchases beyond one's means, all because of easy access to credit and virtual services. Other risks include the misuse of data by unethical parties with access to such information, as well as financial scams via social media and phone. The festival was hosted by the Finance Ministry in collaboration with Bank Negara Malaysia. AMNO has denied claims of interference in the party's disciplinary hearing against former Vice President Datuk Sri Shamuddin Hussein. Its Secretary General Tan Sri Anwar Musa said the disciplinary committee is free to do their investigation and report to the party's highest working committee. He was responding to claims by Tan Sri Apandi Ali that he would be resigning as party disciplinary board chief after Datuk Sri Shamuddin's hearing was postponed. In a statement, Tan Sri Anwar admitted that there is some confusion over the matter that will be clarified once Tan Sri Apandi returns from overseas. He also said Tan Sri Apandi is still the AMNO Disciplinary Board Chief as the party has yet to receive his resignation letter. Dato Sri Shamuddin was summoned earlier by the Disciplinary Board over alleged breach of party constitution. Several AMNO leaders called for action against Shamuddin, who was accused of influencing party leaders to support Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Muhammad. Padang Besar MP Dato Zahidi Zainal Abidin was rushed to the Tuanku Fauzia Hospital in Kanga Perlis after experiencing shortness of breath earlier today. The 58-year-old former Rista chairman is still undergoing examinations but is now in stable condition. Dato Zahidi is under specialist observation at the hospital's coronary care unit. For the time being, only close family members are allowed to visit him. Zahidi has been the Padang Besar MP since 2013 and is also the Padang Besar AMNO chief. Coming up, another week, another wild My V appears. Details next. We're back with Clickbait, where we take a look at what's trending and making rounds in the cyber world today. Another week, another wild Maivi appears. Recently, a dash cam footage of an accident involving Perodua Maivi and a motorcycle at Cebu, Sarawak went viral on various platforms, accumulating at least 150,000 views. So far, there hasn't been any media reports over the incident. Take a look. 
It was a fine Tuesday afternoon at a four junction on Jalan Pahlawan until this happened. It is not known if there were injuries suffered by the victims involved in the accident. However, in the video, the motorcyclist was seen slowly getting back on his feet as witnesses gather around to help him and bring his motorcycle to the side of the road. A Twitter user theorized a monologue by the two motorists as to what could have caused the accident. Another netizen, however, put sole blame on the MyV driver for running the red light, while advising others not to simply accelerate on green and that one should foresee if other motorists from other junctions might run a red light. Now, updated as of 7 p.m., here are the top trending topics and searches on the internet today. Now on to our headline story. At least 76 people were killed and many others wounded in a car bomb attack in the Somali capital Mogadishu on Saturday, marking one of the deadliest assaults in the city in recent memory. The blast occurred in a busy area of the city where traffic is heavy because of a security checkpoint and a tax office. Officials said a truck filled with explosives blew up at an intersection, killing mostly innocent university students and other civilians. Close to 100 wounded people, including children, were rushed to hospitals. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack, but the Shabab militants are suspected to be behind it. In the meantime, the death toll is expected to rise. The United Nations General Assembly passed a resolution on Friday condemning human rights abuses against Muslim Rohingya and other minorities in Myanmar. This move expressed alarm at the endless influx of Rohingya to Bangladesh over the past four decades. The resolution urges the country to end the incitement of hatred against the oppressed minorities, to protect all groups as well as to ensure justice for all violations of human rights. It was approved by 134 countries in the 193-member world body, with nine votes against and 28 abstaining. According to BBC, Friday's decision shed light on the findings of an independent international mission of gross human rights violations and abuses suffered by Rohingya Muslims and other minorities by Myanmar's security forces, which the mission describes as the gravest crimes under international law. Addressing the UN International Court of Justice earlier this month, the country's leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, rejected allegations of genocide. Three staff members of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees have been abducted in eastern province of South Kivu of the Democratic Republic of Congo on Friday. At around 2 a.m. local time, the suspected Mai Mai militia men reportedly attacked the Monga Monga refugees' transit camp in the town of Baraka. A Sangalese of office assistant and two security officers of Congolese nationals were taken. The government force and police have started an investigation following the adoption. In the meantime, the United Nations Stabilization Mission in the country has advised all UN staff in the province to suspend operation and return to bases until further notice. Nearly 2,000 people took refuge in emergency shelters after being swept away in floodwaters as tropical cyclone Sarai pounded Fiji on Saturday, causing widespread damage. One man has been reported missing. As this is only the beginning, the Fiji government has issued a statement warning of destructive force winds with coastal sea flooding to be expected. With wind gusts strengthening to 150 kilometers per hour during the day, Sarai destroyed houses and crops, brought down trees, cut power, and caused considerable flooding in low-laying areas. On its current track, the Category 2 cyclone is forecast to pass adjacent to Fiji's main island, Viti Levu, then across southern islands before heading towards Tonga, where the storm will arrive late Sunday. Kadavu, Vetulele, and Matuku should also expect sea flooding at high tide, periods of heavy rain, and sudden thunderstorms. 
No deaths have been reported so far, but there were fears for the safety of a man swept away as he tried to cross a flooded river. In the meantime, thousands of holidaymakers were stranded with flights to and from Fiji, either cancelled or rescheduled. When we return, Emilia Earhart immortalized in huge mural in Taipei. Stay with us for the details. Thank you for staying with us. Still on for news. A liquid nitrogen explosion rattled an aircraft plant in the United States on Friday, injuring more than a dozen people and causing extensive damage to a storage building. The explosion took place at Beechcraft Plant in Beechcraft's Plant 3 in Kansas shortly after 8 a.m. local time when a four-inch nitrogen gas line erupted. The initial leak, which was contained, caused a rupture in another nitrogen vessel, but the cause of the first rupture is not known. Photos and videos of the explosion posted to social media showed the damage caused by debris to nearby vehicles. The blast sent at least 14 workers to the hospital with injuries ranging from minor to critical. The building affected had caused the company's composite manufacturing operations and experimental aircraft fabrication. A mural on the wall of Ta the Taiping Shop House immortalizing the first woman who attempted to fly solo around the world, Amelia Earhart, has been recognized by the Malaysia Book of Records. Measuring over 14 meters tall and 27 meters wide, the massive painting is the biggest outdoor 3D mural painting in Malaysia. Take a look. The grayscale mural was created by six painters who took nine days to cover the wall of a double-story shop house on Jalan Abdul Jalil with waterproof and weatherproof paint. The mural, costing 280,000 ringgit, was sponsored by a private company. According to the Taiping Municipal Council, the art of drawing murals in Taiping began in 2015, with more to come next year. We will be able to paint lagi 12 buah painting yang sebesar gini lah, mural painting di sekitar bandar Taiping, untuk mengabadikan sejarah-sejarah yang berlaku di Taiping. Work on six of the paintings have already started, with discussions being held by the Taiping prison and several private firms to create another record-breaking mural. It is said that Malaysia was one of Earhart's many stopover countries during her round-the-world trip. She allegedly stopped at the Taiping airport to refuel during her flight from Thailand to Singapore on June 7, 1937. AUC Milan announced Friday that they have signed Swedish striker Zlatan Ibrahimovic on a free transfer until the end of the season with an option for a further year, aiming to fire the Rosaneri up the Serie A table. The 38-year-old returns to Milan where he helped the club win their last league title in 2010-2011 and scored 56 goals in 85 games in two seasons. Ibrahimovic will undergo a medical checkup on January 2nd before taking part in his first training session. The football star last played for Major League Soccer's side Los Angeles Galaxy, where he was the highest paid player in the league and tallied 52 goals and 17 assists in two seasons before bidding adieu to the U.S. At Milan, he finished the 2011-2012 campaign as Serie A top scorer before moving to PSG where he topped League One's goal charts twice in four trophy-laden seasons. The former Sweden international has had a storied career in Europe, playing for top clubs such as Ajax, Juventus, Inter Milan, Barcelona, Paris Saint-Germain and Manchester United, winning numerous trophies in five different countries. A total of 5,000 winter cherry blossom trees have recently turned the Jingyi City in southwest China's Guizhou province into a place of pink fairy tale, offering a feast for the eyes for both locals and tourists. We leave you with a breaking scene, breathtaking scene as we wrap up the news this evening. I'm Otto Othman. Thanks for watching and have a lovely weekend. Good night.